I'm Harvey Howell. I'm a member of the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance National Response Team. I have been deployed on this particular mission for about three weeks now. Uh, I expect to be deployed for this particular mission for the rest of the year. Just to put it into the context of time. The rest of the year means we're talking about Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, for instance. Um, I expect I will be doing a lot of traveling. Uh, I know I will be in Arizona for the Lutheran-sponsored um, refugee seminar, and I've got the exact name here. I will tell it to you because I can't remember it exactly. It's the LIRS, um, and that will be coming up uh, September 2nd through the 5th. There will be at least three members from this area uh, uh, coming to this particular conference, and, and you may hear more about it. It may be appropriate for you to find out more about it. Uh, as the meeting progresses. Um, so on behalf of Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, I want to welcome all of you. Um, I'm going to introduce my friend and, and cohort, Gene Heilman, to also come up and give a few words on behalf of you know, my, my partner agency, United, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, or UMCOR. Uh, and Gene is the acting president of the San Antonio area VOAD. He's the first vice president, and our president is suffering a little bit of health setback. So Gene has graciously agreed to sort of co-host uh, and co-invite this group um, just by way of a little bit of background and then we're going to start moving through the agenda and uh, we have a lot of ground to cover. We have some uh, significant voices that I know you have come to listen to particularly who have some significant pieces of information, real-time information uh, that they're willing to and, and grateful to share. Uh, but, but a lot of what we're going to be doing in this room is finding out who you are, who you represent, what you are doing, and the questions and issues that you particularly have. Because this is what we're about in a VOAD community. It is about community, and it's about coordinating and collaborating, uh, sharing information. And, and so that's, that is the form, and that's what this is about. Um, I tend to be a task master, and you will find me at certain points during this meeting saying things like, we're going to honor everyone's time, we're going to stick to the agenda and that sort of thing, because this is, let's face it folks, this is a passionate topic. There are many, many people in this country who feel very strongly on several different ways relative to this topic, and so we're going we're gonna to be mindful of that, we're going to be mindful that passion tends to take our mouths and tends to take our hearts, uh, but for the purposes of time, we're going we're gonna to try and bridle our passions so that we can share information and see where we're going, because at the end of this meeting, we're all going to leave this room and go do something. It would be helpful if we are doing it together. It will be helpful if we know what each other are doing and how we can help you with your particular area or ministry or your particular need or if we have a resource that might meet that need. So that's going to be the main substance uh, as you look down the agenda of where we're going. But a lot of what we're going to do before we get there is find out really who we all are uh, and a little bit about what it is and where we're, we're doing things. I know in the room there's a number of you who have traveled quite a bit. And so welcome, um, and we'll hear more particularly about that in just a bit. Um, any questions about Presbyterian disaster assistance and, and, um, and our role in, um, in this particular type of event? Do I see a question? No? I'll give you just a little brief information, and then I'm going to get Gene to come up and talk about VOAD. Um, Presbyterian disaster assistance emerged shortly after World War II, primarily as a refugee agency, partner of the Presbyterian Church. Um, and we are particularly interested in uh, this, this time presently at, in the refugee um, care, if you want to use that word. And I'll just read you a bit of the, uh, you can get this off of the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance website. Um, real briefly, uh, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance is the emergency and refugee program of the Presbyterian Church USA. Uh, we focus on the long-term recovery of disaster impacted communities. We provide training and disaster preparedness. We work collaboratively with our church partners and members of the ACT Alliance. 
internationally and nationally, and with our faith-based responders. We connect partners, let me use that word again, we connect partners locally and internationally with key organizations active in response. And as some among those that we connect with are the United Nations, uh, the National VOAD, World Food Program, Red Cross, FEMA, and others. We manage a number of specialized volunteer teams that work nationally and internationally providing consultation, program design and training. We cooperate with the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services in providing service structure for asylum seekers in the United States. And I'll read that bullet for you one more time. We cooperate with Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services in providing service structure for asylum seekers in the United States. And we cooperate with Church World Service in the resettlement of refugees to the United States. A little bit about PDA. Gene, I'm going to invite you to come up and talk a little bit about UMCOR and also the San Antonio VOAD. And there's a mic. Thank you. Well, on behalf of San Antonio VOAD, I want to welcome you and thank you for being here. VOAD is Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster. And that's why I'm there as, as a United Methodist. I'm the Conference Disaster Response Coordinator for Southwest Texas Conference of the United Methodist Church. One of the things about this refugee uh, disaster crisis is that it, in many organizations, cuts across uh, lines within the organization. Nobody has exactly the right portfolio to handle this. And so, uh, in the Methodist Church and in VOAD, we're trying to address that. Uh, one of the functions of the San Antonio VOAD is that we have been actively involved in organizing volunteers during major crises such as uh, hurricanes when we have uh, uh, evacuations into the city. And so that's one of the things we do. But the main thing that VOAD does is communicate among members who are themselves the ones who do the work. And I think that's what uh, we will want to continue to do. Uh, should I report what we are doing now? Or? Do that in a second. Okay. Let me say a brief word about UMCOR. That is our national United Methodist Committee on, Re on Relief. Uh, began after World War II, primarily as an international organization, but more recently has moved into national disasters and is very active in the current uh, crisis. We've, uh, we've gotten uh, several hundred thousand dollar grants from UMCOR to work in the Valley uh, right now and, uh, and have employed a uh, full-time person within the uh, church to uh, sort of coordinate the effort there. Uh, I'll talk more about the specific things that we're doing when that uh, opportunity comes. Thanks, Gene. Thank you, Gene. Uh, and by the way, Gene and I have uh, been involved in the San Antonio VOAD together for some time going back, I think as far back as Hurricane Katrina, but during the 2008 hurricane season, uh, Jean and several of the other San Antonio VOAD members I see in the room, I'm smiling at Jeannie, uh, were very involved when there was a need for volunteer organization and Jean was very active in, in organizing what, uh, what the response was uh, that, that San Antonio government felt was needed for this disaster response and that was the development of a VOC, it's called. We love acronyms in the disaster world. Volunteer Operation Center. It was a way for spontaneous volunteers, folks, some of whom are like you in this room, felt a passion and a calling to do something and needed a way to be able to. And so uh, there was a way to be processed, background checked, because you're going to be working in a shelter with people whose literal worst day of their life is the day that you're encountering them. If you're in an evacuation shelter, it is an awful place to be, better than where you would have been, but nevertheless not nearly as good as where you're wanting to be. Uh, and so Gene has quite a bit of experience with that. We'll talk a bit more about that in just a bit. Okay, for my favorite part of the meeting, 
What we're going to do is um, we're going to kind of go around the room, and because there are so many of us, rather than just point starting here and everybody stand up and introduce yourselves, I've got the cheat sheet. So what I'm going to do is kind of call your name out. We've, all, we've organized this alphabetically as best we can by your organization or church, and so it's going to follow that alphabetical order. Forgive me if I misprolabolize your name, but I've got Bob Camo first with Alta Vista Neighborhood. Bob, you're here. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I've got Barbara Arsenault and maybe Reverend David Phelps from Chapel Hill United Methodist. I'm sorry? And you're Barbara. Yes. Welcome, Barbara. Paul Ryan with the Children's Hunger Fund. Paul, did you make it? Paul's busy. Um, Codo Rio Garza from COSA, that's the city of San Antonio. I see a nod. Are you here? No, not yet. Seth King, Daily Bread Ministries. Seth, did you make it? Okay. Sister Irma from the Daughters of Charity. Sister, thank you and welcome. Um, Olivia Valdez, Divine Redeemer, Presbyterian Church. Right here, thank you. And I see also Rob Mueller from the same church, pastor, thank you. And somebody else, you're pointing. Okay. Uh, Reverend Sue Briner. Or did you, Reverend, thank you very much. Uh, Reverend, if you don't mind, I'm going to get you to stand up one more time because you might have something to say in a minute. You are, if I'm reading your, your vanity right, you're the bishop's associate, but you're the acting bishop for the Southwestern Texas Synod of the Elko. That's the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Thank you for being here. You're, by the way, from Seguin. I am. Uh, the Reverend Don Page. Don, are you here from Faith Community? Okay. Um, then I have a whole litany of, of some people who are very close to my heart because some of them taught me Sunday school here in this church. And so I'm just going to run down the list very, very quickly because there's a bunch of us from First Presbyterian Church, San Antonio, and that would be Beanie. Are you here, Beanie Berkey? Did you make it? Uh, Diana Morehouse. Diane, yes, thank you. Uh, Ed Bondurant, don't see Ed. Grace Daubert, who is also my mother. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Joe Rust, thank you, Joe. Joe's past editor of the San Antonio newspaper. Judy Spencer, longtime friend. Judy's worked with us many times in disaster response during our hurricane shelter that we had here in the church. Uh, Mary Monroe. Mary's sitting next to her husband, Mike. Thank you. Mike's uh, been very helpful in putting together a number of the resources that the church has been uh, looking at relative to this event. And one of the handouts on the table was, uh, was sort of a group of resources that Mike put together. And I invite you to go back if you didn't pick up on those sheets. Um, we've got a few of it printed out, and we'll look at that again. Meg Culp. There, I thought I saw you. Thanks, Meg. Uh, Pat O'Neill, I know, is here in the back. Hi, Pat. Thank you. Longtime staff member at this church. Paula Bondurant probably is driving Ed. Rosemary Angstrom. I think I saw Rosemary. I did. Yes, I did. Thank you. Hi, Rosemary. Virginia Burns. Virginia. Great. Say it one more time, a little louder. St. John's, okay. Somehow we had you associated with First Prez. So if you get tired of them, come on down. <laughs> Just a little humor. Um, Judson Taylor is in the room. He's in the back. Judson is on staff at this church. He's the director of communications and actually put in a stint at the PCUSA, our national headquarters in Louisville, and we are thankful to have him back. Thank you. Uh, Alyssa Payne, who is uh, the missions director for First Press, she's down here. And Alyssa and her cohort, Claire Plantagna, did I say that right, Claire? Okay, <laughs> close enough, apparently, yeah, are both our, uh, on our missions committee. Uh, they direct our missions and um, have had a lot to do with what goes on in this particular church relative to organizing and collecting information on this type of event. I already know that Katie Badana is here and several others, so if I did not call out your name and you're from First Pres, just kind of a quick show of hands. Katie, anybody else? Mark, right Mark. hiding, thank you. And so we'll capture your names on the sign-in sheet for the, for the after, after later we'll send out a, uh, a review. Okay, Whew. Haven for Hope, and did you make it? Sister Julie, welcome. And Ann, it's good to see you again. I also came with the Peace Center, and I don't know if they're on the list. 
St. Pete? Okay. Okay, great. We're going to maybe hear from you in just a second. Cheryl, Cheryl, did I say that right? North, Holy Spirit Episcopal. Is it Cheryl? Okay, great. Welcome. And you're probably sitting next to Leslie. Hi, Leslie, also from Holy Spirit Episcopal. And are you from the same place? John. Hi, John. Great. Um, Cecilia Perez Reyes from the Incarnate Word Sisters of Charity. Cecilia, there you are. Welcome. Did you bring anybody else from the sisters? No. Okay, thank you. Reverend Reginald T.W. Nichols, there you are. And I have uh, George Staley and Esther Chalk uh, from the church, uh, Jefferson, Jefferson United. United. Where is that located, Pastor? Right across from Jefferson High School. Jefferson High School. I may have gone to kindergarten somewhere near there as a child years and years ago. And I see in the back? Yes, I'm Sister Irma Vargas, and I also brought a Sister Susan Pacamani, who is the United States here. Okay. Okay, great. So, so again, if, I, if I'm oversighting you, is that a word? Uh, just holler out, because once again, we're trying to keep track of all of the orgs or agencies in the volunteer world. We're all assigned or participating or a member of some thing, and, and that thing is how we work and network together in that. Anyway, okay. Now I have uh, the Reverend Matt Russell and Pastor David Collins, who are both uh, probably some more from Carn City. Did you all make it up today? Paul, I've got you down. So uh, you're David, yes. and you're from Carnes City, St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Thank you, gentlemen. And did uh, Matt from the Presbyterian Church make it up? Not yet. Okay. Carnes City Church. I'm sorry. Here, Carnes City Prez. Yes. The other first Presbyterian. In Carnes City. In Carnes City. Does I get that right? Great. Um, Carcita McLean, Laurel Heights United Methodist. Did you make it? I did, but I can't stand up. I saw that. I hope that heals. We do that around these kind of places, a little bit of healing. Okay. Uh, Jean Jensen, I think I saw you, Jean, a member of San Antonio VOAD and actually current chair of the Long Term Recovery Committee there. Uh, Jean is with the LDS Charities. Uh, I'm going to work on your name, Miriam, so help me. Miriam Buhanda, the Methodist Healthcare Ministries. You're with the Government Relations. Did I say it close enough? Thank you for being here. Uh, Methodist Healthcare Ministries, by the way, is helping to underwrite the videoing portion of this piece, um, and so you will be able to later on uh, go back and revisit the, the pieces of this that I went over too fast for you to get, uh, and it'll be on the website. And so some of us are actually watching this uh, across the state right now. So thank you. Karen Bell, did you make it? Karen, um, you're with St. Mark the Evangelist and you have the mobile loaves and fishes. Great, thank you. Uh, Katie Faria and Teresa Valdez from Our Lady of the Lake. I see one of you. I'm sorry? Okay, welcome. Uh, Rob Pierce, did you drive up from Pleasanton? Yes, you did. Rob is uh, First United Church in Pleasanton. Thank you, Rob, for being here. David Gibson, Presbyterian Children's Home and Services. David, I thought I saw you. Welcome. Um, I am here. Jonathan Ryan, and you're going to be hearing more from Jonathan. I'm going to invite Jonathan to stand up just so everybody can see him. He's been actually seen quite a bit lately. Uh, he was, uh, he's one of the ones interviewed in this morning's paper uh, article, well-timed well piece. And Jonathan uh, has, is literally in the midst of this, and you're going to be hearing quite a bit from him in just a bit. Uh, Michelle Garza is actually covering uh, the city council. Is that right? That's correct. She's the city council. She's, so we've got multiple things going on simultaneously. Um, Jonathan and Michelle are both with RAICES, which is the Refugee and Immigrant Center for Education and Legal Services. They have been busy, busy folks. Victor Martinez, your associate pastor. There he is. Thank you. Redeemer Prez. And you're the pastor of Mission and Cultural Engagement. And I think that's who Rob was trying to point out maybe a while ago. Nope. Okay. Well, thank you and welcome. Uh, Corey Albrecht. Are you here, Corey? And Marissa Perez. Did you make it, Marissa? 
Yes, there you are. Welcome. So now I get to use your an acronym, S-A-I-S-D. That stands for San Antonio Independent School District. And her title is Governmental and Community Relations. Everybody go, ooh. <laughs> also, Emma Hernandez. Did you make it Emma? She signed up. She's also with the Independent School District, and she's the office school leadership for Team One. You guys are going to be busy, and so thank you all for being here. Erica Borrego, my friend from the Food Bank. Did you make it, Erica? She's a busy lady and one of the past vice presidents of San Antonio VOAD. Uh, Stacy Merkt, the San Antonio Mennonite. Stacy. A little bit louder, please. Pastor Rachel is here and David from our congregation. So we have three folks, including the pastor from the Mennonite Church. Thank you for being here. Ed Scheiber and Jerry Gregory signed up for Temple Bethel. Did you guys make it? Temple. Okay. Um, Rachel Dodd. Rachel? Hi, Rachel. Rachel is from the Texas Interfaith Center for Public Safety. Polity. Do you want to stand up and introduce yourselves real quick? Okay, uh, Piper Madison. Uh, I'm here also with Presbyterian Okay, and? Okay. Actually, you're up with Texas Okay. Great. Is that five of you guys? Yeah. More? Say it a little louder. Texas congregate. Thank you. Hunger. Not yet. It's not noon yet. Sorry. Dale Tremper, Travis Park Methodist. Dale, I saw you come in. Thank you. You're just down the street from this spot, and you guys have been busy. Gene, uh, we've already heard from with UMCOR. Arliss Olson. Did you make it Arliss? Yes. Arliss is the Unitarian Universalist group. Thank you. Re Reverend Lydia Martinez. Reverend, there, I saw you a while ago. Thank you. And you have somebody sitting next to you? We're not together. <laughs> well, 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 technically you are now. I do like pretty girls, but... <laughs> Lady Ray Romano. Lady, did you make it? Lady's very busy at United Way and also a member of this church. I didn't see her. Sally Said. Sally, there you are. Sally, you're the University of Incarnate Word Professor, Department of Modern Language. That's a mouthful. Welcome. Kelly Allen, pastor from University Presbyterian Church. Kelly is sitting somewhere right up front where I can grab her. I don't see her. She's standing in the back, so I can't grab her. Kelly has been very busy. Uh, she is currently the chair of the Mission Presbytery Immigration Task Force and has been very involved in this particular issue even before we became aware of it, going back for several years. Um, and we'll be hearing more from her in just a bit. Richard Holt. Richard, did you make it? Yes. Richard, you are University United Methodist Church. You're the Director of Outreach and Missions. Yes. You've been a busy man. Thank you. We have Minnie and Mario I have Minnie down and Mario also. Great. Welcome and thank you. Uh, I have a bunch of folks who we don't know exactly who you're associated with, so I'm going to run down this list very quickly and just a quick show of hands. So what we're assuming is, since you didn't identify an organization, that you may be a volunteer or simply someone passionate about hearing more. So once again, thank you for being here. A lot of what you're going to be hearing today is designed for particularly your ears to hear. So thank you. Uh, and so I have Ann Forbes. Ann, are you here? Uh, Gloria Almarez, Almarez, Gloria, Elizabeth Gruy, Elizabeth, there you are. Are you associated with the church or another org? Volunteer, thank you. Jorge Montiel, Jorge, did I say that right? Are you associated with an org? I'm an organizer with the Industrial Area Foundation, or I am. Great, thank you. And so we appreciate if when we get the sign in sheet going around, if you'd help us so we can identify that. Joseph Enderley, Joe? Yes, Joe, are you associated with a group? Uh, I am. I'm retired right now, so I can't 
Volunteer. Thank you. Thank you. Juan Flores. Juan? Lulac. So we'll want to, once again, we'll get that down on here. And so welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, Lynn Myers. Lynn, hi. Are you a volunteer or are you associated with the group? So you're a double volunteer. Great, thank you. Uh, and that means we're going to introduce your husband or partner here in just a second, I'll bet you. Uh, let's see, did I get Mario Trejo? Mario? Yes, Mario, welcome. Are you with the group? Oh, you were, we, yes, you are. We're going to get that straight in a bit. Martha Ellenreiter. Martha, did you make it? Martha, and you're probably sitting next to another Ellenreiter, I'm guessing. Are you guys are volunteers? Great. Michelle Darian? Not yet. Roberto von Ellenreiter, that would be you. Thank you. Sylvia Maddox? Sylvia. Yes, Sylvia, are you a volunteer? You're at Incarnate Word. Okay, so you're not a volunteer. You're at Incarnate. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> but once again, it's helpful for us to associate you with an organization, um, and, th and you'll see why in just a bit. Um, Steve Myers. Welcome. Steve's. We're also from the, from the Texas and we're old buddies. <laughs> Thank you, and welcome to the Red Cross. Did I miss anybody or any organization? All right. Thank you. And you can see why we didn't just go around the room and do that. Um, there are a number of us here, uh, and I'm looking at the clock. We've used up quite a bit of our time already, so we're going to just jump right in. What I'd like to do right now, according to our agenda, what we've just done is the uh, introduction part. So the meat of this meeting has yet to start. Yikes! Um, so rather than spend a lot of time talking about orientation, um, I'm just going to ask for a quick uh, show of hands how many of you through the news media or through your own participation in your own organizations understand more than just the headlines what this is about. So for those of you who have a clear understanding of what is going on, I'd like to see a show of hands. Okay? Clear understanding. Okay? For those of you who came and are, and are moved passionately or otherwise by headlines and wanted to know what's going on or simply wanted to know what it is you can do, I'd like to see your hands, please. Show of hands. Okay? I'm, I'm thinking, Gene, that that was maybe 4060. Okay? Um, so I'm going to invite Jonathan to just a minute to come up and, and do a little bit of education about what, what this event really is. But very briefly, very, very briefly, uh, what has happened, and there's a sit rep that some of you had, uh, there were enough to print a few, uh, but the, the resource, and I'm going to hand it up here, and the ladies, Alyssa back there, there's a resource that was also on this table that has a number of links for those of you who are digitally very functional, this will be easy, and for those of you who are not, you'll need to ask someone to help you, but there's a list of resources, several of these are very significant, I'm just going to holler out what they are, one is at the Congressional Research Service, and these are all courtesy of Mike, thank you, uh, and it was called, these are reports primarily, Unaccompanied Alien Children, the Potential Factors Contributing to Recent Immigration. A second one, Unaccompanied Alien Children, an overview, very helpful. Congressional Research Service, the Unaccompanied Alien Children, Legal Issues, Answers to Frequently Asked Questions, extremely, extremely helpful piece, very informative, very clearly written. I, I like that one particularly, Mike. Uh, then I have two from the United Nations, the uh, Children on the Run, Unaccompanied Children Leaving Central America and Mexico, and the Need for International Protection. That's coming from the UN, very helpful. And then the Central America and Mexico Unaccompanied Children Migration, uh, this is a situation report, what we in the disaster world call a sit rep. Uh, and it's fairly current. It's, uh, I believe, dated July the 29th. I'm going to just holler out some statistics real fast. Uh, highlights in this report, uh, it's five pages. There were a few of them. We didn't want to waste paper and print jillions of these. And again, it's on the web, and this gets updated. But very, very briefly, there have been 57,525 unaccompanied children taken into custody on the USA border since October 2013. This reflects the tip of the iceberg of a problem faced by millions fleeing social and economic hardships. 
violence, and drug trafficking. Rapid deportation could threaten the well-being of returnee children given that adequate humanitarian attention and protection is not guaranteed. Poverty, violence, and family reunification are the main reasons the children decide to migrate to the U.S. Let me read that again. Poverty, violence, and family reunification are the main reasons the children decide to migrate to the U.S. During migration, children and adolescents are very vulnerable and are exposed to a high risk to their health, their physical integrity, their dignity, and even their own lives. Um, quite a bit of additional statistical information. I'm just going to skip briefly down to this one that says these children come from Honduras, 29 percent, Guatemala, 24 percent, El Salvador, 23 percent, Mexico, 22 percent, with the rest, the rest coming from 2 percent from all other countries. In other words, there is a mass exodus coming to the United States of young children. And I use the word mass exodus by comparison to the numbers that we have seen historically. And I'm, maybe you can see this chart. Mike, thank you for pulling this out because pictures are really helpful and there's a really great visual. And if I can get to the right page real fast. Yep, here we go. UACs are unaccompanied alien children, as, they're, as, the, uh, as we abbreviate them, uh, in ORR. We're going to hear a little bit about what ORR is in just a second. In their custody between October 2008 through May 2014, here is a bar graph. I'm going to hold it up, and I'm going to highlight it so you can see. We're talking about the children in ORR, that's in the U.S., in the process of, of being processed, sitting down here in October of 2008 at somewhere roughly at 500, the number 500, okay? And the chart, for those of you who can see it, bounces along here, staying under 1,000 until April of 2012, when it bumped up to nearly 2,000 and rocketed up in 2013 to like 3,000, and now we're sitting way up here at 9,000. Now, those are not children who have entered those are children who are actually in ORR, and we'll hear what that is in just a minute. And so now we're going to kick it into higher gear. 